In the city of Gotham, there are a lot of children. And of course, they see the superhero Robin, the young boy who's always at the side of Batman. So of course, some of them want to become Robin. Well, there's an individual who was actually introduced years ago, known as Maps. Maps Mizuguchi was a member of Gotham Academy, a prestigious school within Gotham that she went to with a bunch of her friends and Damian Wayne. And she always expressed an interest in one day becoming Batman's Robin. Once that series, Gotham Academy, was canceled, the assumption was that we would never see Maps again. Well, recently, that's been proven wrong. Maps got a second shot at being in the Batman family, and it was a rather heartwarming story. So today I'm going to tell you the story about the Robin that will probably never be. This is the Comic Story and Channel. I take comic books, find obscure storylines, and turn them into audio dramas for you. The point of this is so that you can catch up on your favorite comic books and either collect these books or go get the next ones within the series. And today we're going to be telling you a backup story in the back of some Batman issues. I'll give a link to which issues there are down below because I can't think of them off the top of my head at the moment. But let's go ahead and get into Maps Mizuguchi's Adventure Journal. December 20th. The solstice is approaching and with it another long weekend. All seems to be normal except for the peculiar disappearance of her classmate, Lindsay Okamura, who left the school grounds over two weeks ago and has never returned. According to this mystery, there are multiple reports of human remains discovered on the banks of the Gotham City. But are they related? For Lindsay's sake, Maps hopes not. Later, the black coach comes to pick Maps up. The coachman is stern but kind. Maps immediately trusts her, but is doubtful that she could take her in a fair fight. Upon arriving at Mormon Dad Manor, Maps realizes that it's been some time since her last visit, and she looks forward to a good meal and warm hearth. But the image of a quiet evening in it is shattered when the lord of the house informs her that tonight's dinner will be with guests. Thus, she should get dressed for the occasion. She did not anticipate guests. The very word ties her stomach in knots. As the night falls and the nobles gather for their feast, she's forced to walk out amongst them, having to hide in plain sight. It is then that the lady of the house introduces her to the man who sticks out like a sore thumb. Bruce Wayne. She's met him before, so she speaks plainly of the disappearance of Lindsay. She's not sure why she just blurted out the situation to Bruce Wayne. It's not like Bruce Wayne can do anything, right? As the dinner party comes to an end, it's time for her to change into her night garb and travel 45 minutes by foot to the Okamura house. As luck would have it, a window appears open to the young girl's room. But it's not the face of Lindsay that greets Maps. Instead, she finds cucumbers. Cucumbers scattered everywhere, and among them are personal belongings showing that Lindsay was packing to leave, but seemingly was hurried out before bringing her clothes. At that moment, Maps hears it, a thunderous and booming voice who asks the question, What are you doing, Miss Mizuguchi? Maps looks back to see Batman standing there and is suddenly snapped back into reality. It's a Batman, and Batman knew her name. Batman takes Maps outside, telling her, that what she is doing is dangerous. And she tries to explain why she's there, but Batman stops her. I'm aware of Miss Okamura's disappearance. I'm looking into it. You are going back home, Miss Mizuguchi. As Batman sits her in the Batmobile, Maps says that she can explain the costume. She knows it's not like official or anything. She's not like a, a, a real Robin, but it makes her feel special. But before they could get very far, the two of them are suddenly attacked by shadowy creatures with Batman jumping out. Stay in the car! Maps pops out. You got it, boss! I mean, yes sir! I'm fully stocked with self-defense gear and reference material! I'll watch our backs! As Maps shines her light behind them though, she sees a weird, big-eyed creature hissing at her. She jumps out telling Batman to be careful, but as he turns his attention towards her, the fish-like creatures reach out of the river, pulling Batman into it! Though he got pulled fairly deep, Batman manages to pull a flash bomb out of his belt, activating it, scaring the creatures enough to let him go. He follows them over to the nearby sewer, and as he lifts his head above the surface, he can hear a voice calling out to him over the comms. Are, are, you, are you there? Batman tells Maps not to touch anything. He's fine. He's just below one of the aqueduct tunnels. She opens up her notebook and says that she saw one of the creatures up close. She could start digging and they might know what they're dealing with. But Batman stops her. There's no we! But Maps stops him. No, okay, listen to this. Kappa are mythical creatures from Japanese folklore, yokai. They inhabit rivers and streams and have webbed hands and feet. They're the size of a human child with amphibian features. 
While mischievous in nature, kappa can also be deadly. And their favorite food is cucumbers. You hear the last part? Cucumbers, Batman. They're like hundreds of those all around Lindsay's room. But as Map is trying to go on and explain, she realizes Batman isn't responding. Batman, come in. But when she gets no answer, she asks the computer, is he okay? Is Batman injured? The computer tells her a list of Batman's current injuries. So she asks the computer to print the report, please. It responds by telling her that that is an unrecognized command. So she just says to forget it and begins scribbling in her notebook. Down below, Batman makes his way through the tunnels when he finds the body of a young child clinging and trying to climb out of the water. But the child isn't responsive. At that moment, several of the Kappa leap out of the water to attack, one managing to bite Batman in the arm. Suddenly, there's a voice calling out to the Kappa and everyone looks back to see Maps hanging from a pipe, speaking in Japanese and waving a cucumber. As Maps moves closer to Batman, he tells her to keep her focus forward. Don't look back! She asks him why, looking over her shoulder only to see the body of the child. Oh God, Lindsay? Batman tells her, no, her name is Emily Corker. She was reported missing two days ago. I'm too late to help her. Your friend Lindsay was gone for more than a week if she's down here. And that's when a figure asks, M Mia? As the figure steps into the light, Maps calls out, Lindsay! And then all of the Kappa begin to hiss. Lindsay tells the creatures, No, these are my friends. Do not attack. And the Kappa stop in their tracks, with the Maps asking, Wait, you can control them? Lindsay turns to her. They, they think of me as their mother. I came down here to look for my grandfather, and I found these Kappa all over the house. I fed them and tried to make them behave, but they started... I thought I could keep them away from people. Bring them down here. And then I ran out of food and they started bringing me... Batman picks up Lindsay. It's okay. Where's your grandfather now? I don't know. After getting out of the sewers and bringing Lindsay to the hospital, Batman drives Maps home as she asks if Lindsay is going to be okay. Batman tells Maps that she is suffering from shock and malnourishment, but she'll pull through. The bigger problem is what to do with her when she leaves the hospital. Both of her parents are dead. Maps tells him, well, I knew that Lindsay was living with her grandfather. Maybe we should look into that? Batman turns to her. I'll look into that. You know, if, if you need any detective help, maybe I can help on a part-time basis? Batman pulls up to her house. You could have been killed tonight. I need you to limit your crime-fighting efforts to the school grounds only. This isn't a game. Do you understand? She takes a flower out of her hair, sticking it on the Batmobile. However, as she's laying in her bed, she could feel that something isn't right. Lindsay said that her grandfather brought the Kappa with him when he came to Gotham as a child, meaning the original one must be like 80 years old. The ones that they encountered were young and confused in search of guidance. Even with Lindsay hiding in the tunnels, there's still some hanging around the Okamura house, which suggests that someone or something is still in there. So, Maps doesn't listen to Batman. She leaves back to the Okamura house, and inside of the Batmobile, Batman can hear a voice stating that they're sorry to intrude, but they have an urgent message from Robin. Well, Maps. She said to call her Robin. She said that you were okay with that. I'm not. And how are you transmitting to me? This is a closed network. Suddenly, the flower that Maps left behind begins to melt, taking the form of a child. And as it finishes, Batman says, Catherine Carlo, you should be in school. Catherine Carlo tells him, most of me is, but I'm here to tell you that Maps went out. She said to tell you that she thinks that she knows what happened to Lindsay's grandpa, that she might need backup. Meanwhile, over at the Okamura house, Maps sneaks in beginning her investigation when she finds a sauna-like room. She opens the door to find Lindsay's grandfather inside, dead. But before she could back away, a ragged voice calls out to her and she turns back to see the original Kappa that Lindsay's grandfather was taking care of sloughing its way towards her. Maps bows. I'm pleased to meet you. I brought some, um, cucumbers? Just in case you were hungry, see? She holds out the cucumber and the Kappa lunges at her. But as it tries to eat both the cucumber and her, it's suddenly yanked off as Batman lifts it into the air, throwing it. Are you all right? Maps doesn't say anything. And he tells her, you're okay. He's gone. Mia, look up. Mia, Robin. She finally looks up as she's crying and she grabs a hold of Batman. Her adventure finally coming to its conclusion. It's the next day that Mia is sitting by the lake 
and she tells Catherine how she thought she was going to die. If it hadn't been for her, she would have. Her brain just sort of went blank when that Kappa attacked. Catherine tells her that as a sentient piece of viscoelastic protoplasm, she doesn't fully understand what death is. She isn't even sure that she's able to die. So it's not something that she's scared of. But she is worried about losing her only friend. Does she still want to be Robin? Does she still feel that it's worth feeling this way? Map stares off into the water, contemplating her future as a potential Robin. Her dreams of working with Batman, of being a detective. And she finally looks back and she smiles. And there you have it. A fun story that probably is in continuity, but I don't know where it fits in. But if you want to know who Maps is, she was actually created in 2014 for the Gotham Academy series. It was just like a fun supernatural book where they were trying to figure out all the mysteries of their own Gotham school. We've covered the entire first series. I never got around to the second series, but we did cover the first series and I'll link it down below. It's one of our oldest videos here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Ever since this happened in the comic books about six months ago, I've been wanting to find a place to bring it to you. I just thought it was such a sweet story for those of us who enjoyed Gotham. Gotham Academy. And plus, it's just kind of cool to think of other kids wanting to be Robin and how Batman gets involved with them. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below and give this video a like. Right now, YouTube's in a weird spot and your comments and likes are what are keeping comic story in the live. So just let me know what you thought about this or who your favorite Robin is. Let me know who your favorite Robin is in the comments down below. I'll talk to you guys next time.